Welcome everyone. I still see people joining right now. Welcome, welcome. We still see the participants filing in, so we'll just give them a moment here to get settled and then we'll get started here momentarily. If you have coffee or anything that's hydration, I would recommend mm -hmm. getting that all set so we can set you up for success. Welcome, just waiting another minute to ensure that everyone has logged in and ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We appreciate everyone joining today. Today's webinar is Making the Most Out of Leads and Opportunities. My name is Lana Archibald. I'm the principal trainer here at Bullhorn, joined by my colleagues, David Cashman, Senior Customer Success Consultant, along with Drew Williams Orozco, also Senior Customer Success Consultant. And let me change our slide here. So Drew, David, and I will spend the next hour with you defining what leads and opportunities are. I'll show you how these types of records can be added into Bullhorn, as well as highlight a few key fields on each record. And then once records have been created in Bullhorn, David will show you how to manage your pipelines through list management, as well as how to convert your leads and opportunities into contacts and job records. And finally, Drew will highlight how automation can be helpful as you are managing your leads and opportunities. I have a few quick housekeeping items that I'd like to uh, review with you. And as you know, all, mute, all audio is muted for the duration of today's webinar, but please don't let that discourage you from asking questions or sharing comments. Just use that Q&A window here in Zoom. You can add any questions or comments that you might have, and we're going to do our best to respond to as many of those questions in real time, but we're also going to follow up after the webinar with responses to all of the questions. And in fact, let's test that Q&A right now. So as we get started, could you put for me in that Q&A window, how do you define what a lead is? What is a lead? And as you're putting those things, your thoughts there in the uh, Q&A, I'm gonna make a quick change on my screen. So what is a lead? You'll see Bullhorn on my screen here in just a second. Right here we go. And We're in Bullhorn, so let's talk about what that lead is. A lead is a person. 
It's a person in bullhorn. And it's someone that you're not currently working with. But as you pursue them, you might uncover that that lead is really a candidate or a contact. And then also, when we think about an opportunity, an opportunity is just that. It's an opportunity for business that you don't currently have. So as an example, maybe you've uncovered that there's an opportunity with a client in the upcoming months. So you want to add it as an opportunity into Bullhorn as a way to not lose sight of it and then manage it in your pipeline. Because that way, when the time comes, you're going to be ready to convert that opportunity to an actual job. And as you can see, I'm here in Bullhorn now. And uh, before I even click on anything, I do want to mention that as myself and David and Drew, as we're highlighting fields on records throughout Bullhorn or columns in those list views, I want you to know that many of these things can be customized in your own Bullhorn environment by your Bullhorn system administrator. All right, so adding a lead is super easy in Bullhorn. All I need to do is click on Add. And from that drop down, I'm going to choose Lead. And I do want to confirm everyone can see my screen, correct? Maybe give me a nod. All right, perfect. So I am adding a lead. And uh, even if I scroll down, you'll notice there are not many fields on a lead record. In fact, none of them are required except for one, which was that status field. We'll get to that in a moment. You again, can have different fields on your lead record. You can decide what fields are or are not required. But honestly, the reason that most fields shouldn't be required is that often you have very limited information about that lead. For myself, I often associate it with not having anything more than what I would maybe find on a business card. And a lot of times I don't even have that much information. So I want to highlight some of the fields here on the lead record. And I'm going to start with the fourth field down. It says new company, but you'll notice right below it, there's another field and it says existing company. You have to think about who is this lead? Are they associated with a particular company? Is it a company that's already in your Bullhorn database? And if they're not, then you can add that new company right there on that new company field. But if this new lead is associated with a company that is already in your database, you can start typing it in the existing company field. And you notice how it found that one, Ace Engineering. Then I'm going to look two fields below. You see that next field that says priority. And when I click on that field, I have the ability to capture what priority level I deem this, this lead. And then if I scroll down a little bit further in this lead details section, there's that one required field, the status. So I'll start them off as that new lead. But then you'll also see there is uh, a field a little bit further down and it says expected close date. And this is one of these custom fields here in my Bullhorn environment. Remember, if you like it, you can have your Bullhorn administrator create these fields as well. But what I like about the expected close date field is that this is helpful as, as a way to add some ownness on users in hopes to pursue this lead and convert them to a, a contact or even a candidate before whatever this expected close date might be. And then even on the flip side, this is a good field to search later. I can find leads that have maybe gone past this expected close date so that I can take an action. And then also the field directly below it. A lead can be either a contact 
or a candidate. And as I'm adding this lead into my Bullhorn system, if I, I have an idea of what direction we're going to go and how I'm going to pursue this particular individual, I can select contact or candidate. And as I'm pursuing them, there is a possibility that uh, my thoughts will change. And so I can always keep this particular field updated. Now, remember when, I'm gonna scroll up just a little bit. Remember when I associated this lead with an existing company, Ace Engineering? I want to show you something. I'm going to click on find and I happen to have ACE engineering open. So when you're working with companies, when you click on the contacts tab, you'll notice over on the right, I have two buttons. I can see that at this particular company, there are four contacts, but notice I can also see the leads. I have a couple of leads also associated with this company. If you have any questions at all regarding leads, please make sure that you're putting those in that Q&A section. Uh, and then I'm gonna move now to talk about an opportunity. So there's a few different locations within Bullhorn that I can add an opportunity just like I did with the lead. I could click on the add button at the top and add an opportunity from there. I happen to be on this ACE engineering company record. So if I click on the actions button in the upper right, you'll notice that I can add an opportunity from here as well. And I'm gonna to toggle back to my contacts over at ACE engineering and I'll look at Phil Jenkins, because another location that I can also add an opportunity is from a contact record. And I am going to take this path from the contact. I'll select add opportunity. This is actually my preferred path because you'll see in a moment when I determine what type of opportunity is this? I'll say in my example that it's a uh, an opportunity for a contract job. And also I should point out when you're choosing what type of opportunity it is, I select a contract, but whatever you select, those are tailored tracks, meaning that if I know this opportunity is, in my case, for a possible contract job, because I selected it, it's going to prompt me now with the right types of fields to collect the information that I need. And then remember, I added this opportunity from the contact record, and that is my preferred location to add because you'll notice that both the company and the contact fields are pre-populated. Had I added the opportunity in any other location, I would have to make sure that I knew the company and the contact because those are required fields on an opportunity record. So like we looked at the lead, I want to do the same here as well. You'll notice that title field is also a required field and that's associated to a job title or a project. And then of course, the status is another required field. And if it's a brand new opportunity, I like to start in that open status. I will say again that those statuses as well as these fields, remember they're customizable. So your Bullhorn uh, system administrator can update at as you choose. Another field that's not required, but one that I really like is deal value. In this field, I can put a dollar amount. So I'll just put $20,000 because this is what I believe the revenue could be if this opportunity comes to fruition. And often I work with different sales teams that have a specific formula that they like to follow to determine what that deal value amount might be. Another field that I wanna highlight on this opportunity a few down from that deal value is the expected close date. 
just like we saw the expected close date on the lead record, I also have it available here on the opportunity. And this expected close date would be the date that I'm targeting to convert this opportunity to an actual job. Of course, then you'd add the description of your opportunity, collect all of the necessary information, and then save it. If you have any questions regarding the opportunity record, again, please put that in that Q&A. Uh, I am going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now to David. He's going to show you how to manage these leads and opportunities in your pipeline once you've added those records. Thanks, Lana. Uh, let me just share my screen. And I believe I'm sharing on my Bullhorn homepage right now. Thank you, Drew. Um, and yeah, so now that we know what a lead and an opportunity are, we're now going to review how we can actually process these within your system and manage them effectively. So in order to access these records, we should go to our menu. And if we want to look at all our leads or all our opportunities on the system, we simply go to our lead list or our opportunity list view. It's important to note, as Alana said, these are highly customizable on the system. We can also change the name of these types of records. So if you don't like the name of leads, you can change these to prospects. Similarly, you can call opportunities, potentially jobs, if you needed to. From here, what we can do is we can go into our lead list. And this is going to show us every piece of information related to our leads. When we're on our list view, we got quite a lot of columns to work with. It's going to have every piece of data that we want to have on our lead records. This is important to note too, that we can highly customize this area. So on our list view, I can change the columns. To do so, I can just click on my columns. And from here, I can remove any columns that I feel like I don't really need to look at right now and bring in any new columns by simply searching for that specific data. One thing that I've done myself and for my own engagements is create layouts. The reason why I like layouts is because they allow me to easily snap between different views. For example, I've got my lead communication overview. So by simply clicking on my layout, it's now going to show me all relevant information in terms of that priority field that Lana mentioned, but also information such as the contact information here, such as the phone number, the email, as well as when this person was last contacted via a note. If you want to have a more comprehensive overview and see some details such as the expected close date, or if we're working with specific contacts or candidates, you can again create your layouts from here by picking and choosing what columns you need, and then simply click on the create button to save that layout. In this case, I've created a, a layout named Lead Key Info. With this information displayed, I can now see specific information such as the title of this, uh, of this current job title for the lead. I can also see the owner, as well as that contact or candidate field, uh, as well as other information here, such as that expected close date, the priority, and any industry that this person's working with. Oftentimes, these fields can be quite important. So from your side, if you wish to make these required, such as the priority, expect a close date, or if this is a contact or a candidate, your administrator can make these fields required, which will help with the idea of searching on the system, but also for reporting to see where you're exactly sourcing your leads, what industries your leads are coming from, or how many leads, are, uh, how many leads contacts, or candidates you're generating on the system. When in this list view, I can do some specific searches to identify the records I need to work with. One example I'll show you here is that expected close date field. So from here, what I can do is look at all the records that were uh, due to be closed in the past, say, 21 days. And this is showing me that I have a total of four. And on top of this, I can use my status field and look at specific leads that are currently open and not having been converted. This is now showing me that there are three leads that haven't been converted. And I can see that their expected close date were due on the 1st of September as well as the 30th of August. Again, I can filter this down further by simply using my priority field to identify the top priority records. And from here, I can contact the owner of this lead and ensure that we're following up with this record in order for us to convert it into that contact record. Whenever we're working on Bullhorn, if you ever see this clear button, it means there's some type of filter being performed on the list view. So from here, what I'll do is I'll click on Clear All. And this is going to bring me back to the base where I can see all my records. If you're ever searching and you see the number of records you're working with, simply click on the checkbox. And from here, you can see I've got a total of 22 leads on my system. Within Bullhorn, we can also do some further searching. One search that I quite like to do is what's called an advanced note search. This is a free feature that you can enable on your system with the assistance of support. And you can, uh, you can access this search by clicking on the advanced search criteria. 
And from here, we have several areas to search within. So I'm just going to zoom in slightly so it's easier to read. We have our keyword searching, which works off of Boolean operators. If you ever want to see what searches or what fields you're currently searching against, simply hover over the magnifying glass. And this is telling you that you're searching against the ID of a record, the name, the current job title, the client corporation, or any comments logged against these records. The additional criteria, like columns, will allow you to search against any field against the lead record. So for example, I can search for records that are specifically contacts. If I need to uh, add in some additional fields, I simply click on add field to search, and I can search for other fields inside of here. For example, I want to focus on records that currently have a specific status of new lead, qualifying, uh, as well as unqualified. It's important to note that if I was to click on include all, this search would fail because with include all, I'm looking for a record that has all three of these statuses. So instead, I'll use the include any, which works off an R operator, meaning that I can have a record that has any of these record, uh, any of these statuses. Going down to the advanced note search, this is the feature that you can have enabled with support if you don't currently see on any of your lead, contact, or candidate records. This allows you to search for specific note activities, whereas the original note searching only allowed you to search for the presence of a single note. So from here, I can have a look to see if a record does or does not have a specific lead, or sorry, a specific note. And in this case, I'm gonna have a look for records that haven't had specific communications, such as an email or a call in the last 14 days. So from here, I can click on the action dropdown, and this will allow me to search against specific note types that I'm capturing. Again, from your system, you can add in additional note types. In this case, I'm gonna use an outbound call, inbound call, as well as email. This is now gonna show me any record on the system that has not had one of these notes added in a specific period of time. In this case, it will be all time. But if I go back to add a field to search, I can then go in here, click on day added, and say, only show me records that have not received an email or a call within the last 21 days. From here, I can click search. And this will now show me all four records on the system that have not received a phone call or an email in the last 21 days. From here, I can read for more information. So I can click on the binoculars tab. And this is going to show me some key information on these records, such as any specific note activities logged, as well as any details that we have. The details tab itself is quite useful, as I have some key information related to this record, such as their job title, the current status. But I can also see the history of this lead, such as that they've been in a new lead status of 385 days. This is obviously a good way to see how long we are in a specific status. And if you see a common trend between specific statuses remaining in that status for a long time, it could be used as a way to uh, build a report to see which statuses we need to maybe improve on in terms of our own processes. One quick tip that I have for any time you're using this list view is that if you just click on a blank space, for example, between 239 and the name, and then you click just down on your keyboard, you can quickly shift between the different um, slide outs. So from here, I'm looking at uh, Matt Mood's record, but if I want, I can click back up and it'll bring you to Haley's record. This is a useful way, again, just to quickly uh, sift through your records. And it can also be good for your recruiters if they need to run through multiple CVs. It works across any list view. If this is a search that you ever want to run quite often and you don't have to create the search criteria every time, you can create a favorite. Favorites are dynamic searches in your system that allow you to basically run that search with the click of a button. So from here, what I can do is simply click on favorite and click on save this search. And I can then call this leads without calls slash emails in last 21 days. From here, I can make this a public or a private search. If I make a public, I can share it with my colleagues. In this case, I'm just going to keep it private. Now, if I was to ever log out my system and my, my, lead, my lead list gets refreshed, I can go back into my favorites. And from here, simply click on leads without calls or emails. And this will run the search again. If any of these leads do have a note added of call or email, they will then be removed from the search because they no longer um, have that criteria of not having that note. These favorites are really good. Again, they can be used across any list views, and they're a really good way of reducing the time it takes to find the records that you need. Especially if you're going through specific business development, you can find specific records based off of, again, when you last contacted them, a geographical region, or a specific industry that they work in. In this case, we're gonna have a look at Haley's record to see how we can actually progress this record from a potential contact into a live system contact. With Haley's record open, we can now see the key information on this lead record. 
anything that you see inside of here can be customized. From the view that we have at the top, I've got the information such as the ID, their first name and last name. I can also see some useful information like their contact details, again, whether they're a contact or a candidate, and these other custom fields that I've added, such as that priority and the expected close date of the 20th of September. If you're not seeing this information, but you'd like to add it in yourself, your administrator can do so within the view layout. Similarly, in the overview tab, I have my own specific workflow. Bullhorn standard workflow is based off of statuses. In this case, it's new lead, qualifying, convert, and closed. If you'd like to add in some specific statuses or specific actions like a note or a uh, appointment or a task, you can also add those in and it'll light up uh, showing you that you've completed these actions. Again, all can be completely customized from our system settings. One other thing I recommend is to add in our specific overview cards. In this case, I've got my key lead info. Similar to the top of the page, I also have another card here that has specific information. In this case, I just have all the key info, but you can actually create multiple cards here. Perhaps one has the industry information they work in, and another card has the contact information. All of this can be customized. And I like to add in these uh, specific overview cards from my side, because we do have the standard details card, but the details card can be removed. Whereas this standard uh, or this custom card that we add in is a card that can't be removed. It can simply just be moved around the page like so. That's why it's quite nice to have all that information in front of you. In this case, though, what we're now going to look at is the process of moving this record from uh, new lead to qualifying. And it's important to note a lot of the actions that we're going to perform while we're on these BD activities. From our side, it's just a case of updating the status from new lead to qualifying. But when your users are working with these records, they're going to be performing phone calls, sending emails, or meeting face-to-face. -face. We want to ensure that you've got all this information tracked within Bullhorn. Oftentimes in Bullhorn, uh, when, when clients are moving from utilizing lead records outside of the system and, and they're now using it within the system, we want to make sure that they have all the information in front of them. Bullhorn needs to be that one source of truth for all uh, information, whether it be recruitment or sales activities. And oftentimes our, our teams that are using leads and opportunities the most have the mantra of that if it's not within Bullhorn, it hasn't happened at all. In this case, what I'll do is I'll say I'm now qualifying this lead record. So from here, I can click on the status. Alternatively, I can click on status here and update this status to qualifying. With this done, I'll just refresh my record and we'll see our workflow icon will now update. In terms of the activities being done, they can all be accessed from the actions drop down from here. You can see from here, I can email my lead. I can add a specific note. I can add a task or I can add an appointment. And if needed, I can add them to my distribution list for mass mail purposes. Or if there are some specific high priority leads that we want to capture in a specific static list, we can create a tear sheet or a hot list. In this case, I want to say that I'm planning on having a call with this person. So what I'll do is I'll add a note. This then brings up the add note page. And it's important to note that you can't just type out your information from here. But what you can also do is use the note template and have some pre-populated information that you'd like to use, whether it be specific requirements or questions you'd like to ask. You and your team can create uh, note templates similar to favorites and share them amongst each other so that when you have that note template created, you simply click on your note template and it'll bring through your information. In this case, what I'll do is I'll just say call planned for nine slash 12. And what I can also do is I've, if I need to reference any specific records, such as a colleague, I can use the at symbol and I can reference, say, my colleague just can reference myself, for example, so Jessica's record here. Or if I wanted to reference a specific job record or a specific opportunity that we were looking at, I can use the hashtag symbol and I can reference a specific record also. In this case, you can see I can reference opportunity records and I can reference uh, placement records also. This is a really useful way of using notes across the system, allowing you to send out emails to users because anyone you uh, use the at symbol for, they will then receive an email to let them know that you logged a note with all that referenceable information. From here, I'm gonna say I'm gonna log a specific note. And from here, I can log it as a call, as a left message. In this case, I'm just gonna use other because I actually not, haven't contacted this person just yet. I'm simply using it as a reminder for myself. Further down, I can log a, a specific next action. In this case, I could log an appointment if I already have a call set up. I can then send those appointment details to this uh, specific lead. And this will also appear in my own planner on Bullhorn so I can see any events happening this week or whenever this was scheduled. For me though, I just want a reminder to make sure that I'm gonna call this person tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is log a task as a follow-up action. What I can now do is now that I'm happy with the new information, 
I simply click on save. And from here, I can see that the, that the note has been added. If I go back to my record, I have my note logged. That also appears in recent notes. And then I can go to add task and see the additional information from here. If I need to specify when this is due, I can go to my due date and time, click that it's due tomorrow, and I'll say that it's due tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. And then I can also set up a reminder to be sent 30 minutes before it's due. So I'll receive an email saying that I need to send out this um, or set up this call. In this case, I'll click save. With this saved, I can now begin progressing this uh, uh, record further. If I want to see more information, I can see the specific notes and tasks logged in the activity tab. Let's say that the conversation went quite well with this person and they're happy to do business with us. What I'll now do is use the convert option. This can be done again by clicking on convert or by clicking on convert in my actions tab up here. Once we're clicking on convert, we're given two options here. One is to set this record as a contact, but as Lana mentioned, this record could also be a candidate. So in this case, I could click on convert to candidate. This lead is also part of an existing company, the ACE engineering company referenced earlier. But if this was a brand new company, we could then just add the company from here. And when, I'm, uh, when I click on next, I'll be prompted to add the company first before creating the contact. If the conversations went really well, and this contact also had a specific opportunity for us to work on, but they haven't confirmed the role yet, we can also click on convert new opportunity. From here, what I'll do is click on next, and this will allow me to create the contact record. From here, a lot of the information I've captured has all been, has all been brought through. So I can see the title, the company, how I sourced this record from an event, which was captured through the conversion source field. And I can also see some other information here, such as the email address and direct phone number. Anything else I need to capture, such as any uh, categories or business sectors they work in, can all be captured from here. In this case, I'm going to say this is now an active contact. With the contact created, we can now begin working on this record as an actual client of ours. So we can begin looking at the um, we can begin looking at the actual conversion of roles or creating opportunities for these roles. From here, we can now close out this uh, this specific uh, lead by just clicking on closed. Or if we have automation, we can look to automate this process too. In this case, what I'll do is just open up our contact record really quickly to show you what happens. From here, I have my uh, record opened and I can also see uh, the notes that was allowed for my lead record have been brought over to my contact record. Let's say in this scenario, I'm now gonna be looking for a role with this person. They presented a specific uh, opportunity. We haven't confirmed that job just yet. So what I can now do is go to my opportunity list and see all the relevant information. Similarly with the lead and our lead list, all the, all the information relevant to our opportunity record is available to us on our list view. Once again, we can completely customize this. From my side, I've created some specific layouts. One layout allows me to see all the specific revenue information that we could bring. So like Lana mentioned, we had some deal values. From my side, I can also use this deal value to see how much this opportunity could be worth to us. And the fact that I'm sorting by descending means the top deal values are appearing at the very top of my list. Alternatively, what I can do is go to my pipeline view. This is gonna show me some additional information, such as the type of role that we're trying to fill, whether it be a permanent role or a contract role. I can see other information too, such as the sourcing information, when it was added, or specific uh, business sector information. The last view I have then is what I call my closed overview. This includes some specific fields here, such as reason closed. And from here, I can see information as to how we won or lost specific opportunities. This is a really useful field to use because we can then begin to report on the specific opportunities that we placed, but the ones that we've lost, we can identify opportunities as to how we lost them, whether it be to competition, no response, or lack of funding. This can all be captured in Bullhorn when we're progressing through our opportunity records. If you wanna see more information about your opportunities, you can do so by clicking on the binoculars. And that will again show you key information such as any jobs that have been uh, tied to these opportunities, any specific notes logged, or on the details tab, we can see how close we are to potentially winning this deal, how long it's been in the status of open, as well as that weighted deal value versus the total deal value. In this case, what I'm gonna do is open up the opportunity of Java developer for Brightworks Manufacturing. From here, I can see all the key opportunity details. Similar to our lead records, the standard workflow in Bullhorn is based off of our status. So we have the open status, qualifying, negotiating, signing, and then finally conversion into a role. One thing I'd like to point out with opportunity records, similar to jobs, there can be different types. So we can have permanent roles or we can have um, contract roles. 
What we can do within Bullhorn is create what are called tracks or mapping tracks. That means that if I'm looking at, say, a permanent role, I may not need to see information such as pay or bill rate information or maybe a contract length. But if I'm on a contract role, I can control that information and only display it for contract specific roles. This is basically done through your field mappings in what are called opportunity tracks and field mapping tracks on jobs also. From here, I also want to show you a quick view, if I just zoom in a bit. If I hover over the status, it's going to give me some information in terms of when we enter the status of open, how many days it's been in the status. I can also see that total deal value. And then we also have the win probability value. This again can be customized from your side. If you feel like that an open opportunity should have a lower win percentage or a higher win percentage of 10%, your admin can set this up and then you can report on your total deal value versus weighted deal value in the way that works for you. Similarly with the uh, workflow icons, again, these can be customized. In our case, we're relying on statuses, but you can add in specific note types, interview types, or uh, sorry, appointment types. One thing I've seen my clients use is an actual file type. Let's say you wanna have like a terms agreed. You can have it so that this, this icon will only light up if a terms agreed file is added in. Once again, when we're working on these opportunity records, the important thing for you is that you have all the information in front of you, but you also have the tools to ensure that you can add notes tasks or appointments, first off to add that onus on your users to ensure they're logging that information, but also to ensure that you have a repository of all the information in the system so you can effectively report on specific opportunities going forward. One thing I'd like to point out as well is uh, while we're working on these opportunities, we can still look to create business opportunities with this specific client by letting them know that we already have some top talent for them. In this case, I'd like to show you a quick tip that I have in relation to Bullhorn's AI capabilities. I have a candidate here, Oliver Finch, that I feel could be a good match for this Java developer role. So even though we haven't secured it yet, I'd like to show our contact DW that we have a really good candidate for them and we have a host of other candidates that if they were to work with us, we can send them straight away. So what I can do from here is use my Copilot card, which is our AI integration. And from here, what I can do is click on more prompts and create what's called a client pitch. This is gonna take the candidate's resume. And from here, if I click generate, it's gonna generate an overview for this candidate and why they might be a good fit for our role. Now, from my side, I wanna ensure that this candidate's information is, is anonymized, so it's more of a spec profile. So what I can do from here is just save a prompt that I have, click on custom action, I'm gonna copy this prompt in. And what I'm saying here is that I wanna make sure the candidate isn't using their name, so I'm gonna call it our candidate. I'm also asking them to shorten this email and have more bullet points on the candidate skills. So now when I click submit and regenerate the content, our candidate's now going to appear rather as Oliver Finch. It's now going to be called our candidate. And if we want, we can also uh, express that, you know, we want to have this in specific formats such, uh, uh, such as checklists or specific items with additional details. If you're happy with this email, what you can now do is just click on copy to clipboard and create a spec CV. If you're not familiar with, with uh, performing spec CVs in Bullhorn, this can be done by clicking on the add appointment or sorry, add client submission screen. And from here, we can go to our comments and add in some additional information. And I can also reach out to a specific contact, DW from here. And in this case, let me just grab DW's ID so I can find them, 257. And from here, I can just click on compose email. It's important if we're doing a spec role, we're not including the role itself. So I can click compose email. And then from here, fill out all the information related to the actual opportunity and copying the information that we had from our records, uh, sorry, from the email I had earlier. Now, my, uh, my system isn't linked up with my email, so I can't send this out uh, correctly. But from your side, what you can do is log your specific opportunity record from here. And when this uh, email is sent, you'll see an action like this, where the email is logged within the opportunity record, and you have all the spec information logged from here, such as being linked to the candidate or the contact. It's a really good way of showing your client that you already have a whole host of records so that when we do have the job, we can provide them with a top quality candidate immediately, helping us reduce that time to fill and providing both the candidate and the client a top experience. With that said, the client's now happy for us to work with them. So again, we're going to move them through the process of qualifying and negotiating. That again can just be done by updating the status. It's going to progress along here. And let's say we got to the final stage of conversion. What well, all I need to do is similar with an opportunity is simply click on the convert section. So from here, I can convert this to a job. And this will allow me to create our job record, whether it be a direct hire role, contract or contract to hire role. Again, if we have our track set up, I'll only be shown the relevant information depending on the employment type. 
This information will then be brought through directly from our record. And I can see all the key information being brought through from that opportunity, allowing us to begin actually working on this client with our jobs. That's pretty much the whole process that we have from, uh, from lead to, to contact to uh, opportunity. Before I hand it over to Drew, I just wanna show you one or two quick reports that you may find helpful just to see how your team are performing on your BD or sales processes. What you can do from your side is go to the menu and on Enterprise Edition, which allows for leads and opportunities, you can use the My Dashboard section. And this is gonna have a whole host of information that you can use to effectively see how your teams are performing as well as how your overall sales process is performing. One dashboard we have here is the opportunities at a glance. And when this loads through, we'll see the total number of active, lost, and won opportunities. What we can also see is some other information, such as the opportunities requiring action. This is a dashboard that's going to let me know that if the uh, the expected close date is exceeded, we'll then see that the um, the record is being made aware to us here. So we can action on the owner to let them know that they should follow up on this or perhaps close it off. Also, if the opportunity record hasn't been updated for over 30 days, we'll also have this dashboard appear showing us that the record needs to be updated. One other dashboard that's quite useful is the pipeline velocity. This allows us to see how long it takes to move from, say, the open stage to a stage of closed one. In this case, only 6% of our opportunities reach that stage. So again, it's gonna allow us to identify gaps in our process and see where we can improve. One useful thing with dashboards is we can have multiple of these dashboards. So from here, I can go back to my pipeline velocity and have a look at it for a specific team, employment type or company, again, to identify those gaps. So these are some useful dashboards you can do to identify any specific business, uh, um, business opportunities for you to, to kind of take action of. Additionally, if you're capturing information such as the business sector, you can see which business sectors provide potentially the most deal value as well as the most number of placements or uh, opportunities. And if you click one inside this binoculars, it'll break down this even further by the business sector. You can see how many are currently open, closed, or lost. With all that said, we hope that once you have your opportunities open, you can begin to close them off. And if you do manage to place that opportunity, what you can then do is close off your opportunity from here. And you can say if you've won it or lost it. And this will again help you on your report so you can easily see which opportunities have you won and lost. That's everything I wanted to show you today in terms of the opportunity workflow in the ATS. I'm now going to hand it over to Drew, who's going to show you some really cool ways to utilize the automation feature for your lead records. Thank you. Thanks, David. Appreciate it, man. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now, as long as Zoom cooperates. If I can get a thumbs up. If you can see my automation screen here, excellent. All right. Boop. Cool. Hello, friends. Hope you're having a fabulous day. I'm stoked to talk to you about one of my favorite products that we have in our lineup, Automation. Uh, in our time together on my part, we're going to cover making sure that your lead entity is turned on, um, updating lead statuses in your workflow, a little bit about list criteria, as well as a great blueprint for a 10-week sales process, just in case you haven't dabbled before. So let's dive in. First and foremost, if you've invested in the enterprise version of automation, you want to go right here in your system and make sure that your lead entity is turned on. You want to click this Add Automation button and click that blank Automation button right below it. Um, if, as you see here in my example, you can see that lead based is an option for me to start exploring and creating an automation workflow that I want to work with on my leads. So, if you do not see this, please partner with our support friends and they'll be happy to get that enabled for you. Um, I digress. We'll move forward. So, in the example for the nurturing new leads that you see before you, you can see precisely who we're targeting with our list logic. Our list logic lives in our automation enrollment, and it's as easy as clicking where leads from this list is included, the blue hyperlink that it lays before you. Here, you can rename the list if you'd like, and it'll also show you a real-time uh, uh, lead view of who is matching this criteria. Also, you'll see if it's an always updated list or a one-time list. I'd recommend always going with the always updated list because the one-time list doesn't allow you to adjust it later on. And basically what your list criteria means is that any lead record that matches the criteria set will be pulled into this workflow and the action that is set will be performed on them. As you can see here, 
we have our leads that their status is new leads with a last note on the record uh, left more than 14 days ago that are going to be pulled into this workflow. In your own instance, you can play around with the criteria based upon what you're looking to target in your ATS. And you can even include a condition group, which would open up the possibility of giving you the ability to have an extra or statement if the workflow requires it. So for example, if I'm in this condition group and I select the or, or if I add a second condition, anytime you're selecting that and or function, it's going to affect the entire group. Whereas if I go ahead and add a separate condition group and select that button, you can actually create workflows based upon or logic there. So if they fall into this condition group or they fall into the secondary condition group, they'll actually go through this workflow. Moving on here, you see here is our next workflow step that anybody that falls into the criteria that we've set in our list view will go through this email A-B test. You can actually take advantage of this feature right inside your automation workflow. What it does, you select two emails that you'd like to test up against this specific workflow that you're, you're running. These emails will be sent out to the leads that are fitting the criteria that have been set for this workflow. And then based on the parameters set, um, these are at your disposal right here underneath that. It'll actually take it one step further for you that based upon these parameters, the email that does perform better will continue to be included while the one that did not perform as admirably will go away. So you can select how many contacts you'd like to test this on. This is a text box. So however many you think would be a good test, whether it be 50, 100, 150, and then you can also decide which metric should determine that winner, whether it's the open rate, the click rate, or even the job view rate. Now, one thing that I wanna call out here is, you can in fact add tasks here and even update your lead status based upon the actions that take place and notify your team that the lead has been closed, qualifying, or even converting, converted. Kind of leaning into what David was mentioning, based upon those statuses that you have over in the ATS, this is where the data hygiene piece comes into play. You want to make sure those statuses are managed appropriately and they're accurate to reflect what your pipeline is doing, who you're talking to. You can actually have automation take care of that for you in the background so you don't have to worry about anything falling through the cracks. Ideally, we're letting automation take a, uh, some of that lift off of our plate because I know we're all busy. This is a great way to do so. Here, you can also send a notification based upon the status that was changed to your internal folks and let them know, hey, this was closed or this is qualifying based upon these parameters. And I'll show you what uh, adjusting a notification will look like in just a little bit. So let's say we're dealing with the sales contacts that have officially been converted. You're doing business with them, okay? So in this 10-week sales process, the um, first thing that you wanna do if you wanna find this and kind of start from scratch, you would go ahead and visit this add new automation button one more time. It's a great place to start because it's where your blueprint, uh, blueprints are located in your own automation instance. This one happens to be located all the way here at the bottom. And of course, we see that yellowish orange uh, color there to signify, hey, it's for my sales contacts. And you'll also see a description right there below it. So when I click into it, all right, you're going to see the description at the top. And it will, be, it will show you a preview right here underneath of what that sales automation will look like. So instead of this view over here, where you have to scroll all the way down, you begin to see a preview of what uh, the intention of the workflow that you're creating and what it is that you can take out, add more to it, all that fun stuff. And one thing that I always like to call out here is that you can alter all of these steps to your heart's content. You wanna remove a few weeks from this process. You don't need a 10 week process. That's fine, you can. You have more things on the docket that you wanna add and you wanna make it a 15 week process. You totally can. You can add them. I always tell all of my clients, 
don't be afraid to play around here. Don't be afraid to adjust. All right. Kind of like we did with leads, I go ahead and look at my list logic for this specific automation. And again, it comes down to status, date added. The system is going to let you know what you have at your disposal and what you can add to your own list criteria. Things such as in a previous automation, you can have them flow into another automation. If they've completed a specific workflow or uh, yeah, a specific workflow that you had them run through before, you can include them in this automation. The opportunities are endless and you're only limited by your imagination when it comes to anything regarding automation. Above all, you wanna focus on your sales process, okay? The blueprints are meant to be a guideline. None of them are a requirement. You wanna play around and tailor your workflows to your org's needs, all right? So I mentioned notifications before and you'll notice in this example, you have the option to edit the notification which is very similar to the email builder that's inside of automation here. We'll see which one loads first. Let's see if it, nope. Womp womp, it's fine. My internet is, is betraying me today. <laughs> That's A-OK. -okay. So the email builder, uh, I'll bring up the uh, the article for y'all right here in knowledge base. Unless, let me see something. Oh, well then, let me fix that first really, really quickly. VPNs, y'all, it's very important. I'm sure y'all know how that goes. Perfect. So the email builder and automation is more advanced than it would be in the ATS version of this, right? So we're used to email templates on the ATS side, kind of limited, not really allowed to add images. Whereas in your email builder, as well as your notification builder, you're gonna be able to add things like hyperlinks, images, and really get yourself to stand out um, based upon some pretty snazzy emails if you'd like. You really can set yourself apart from everyone else in this manner. go back to the talent there. Cool. So one thing that I love to point out, right? We harp on data hygiene, we hype on data cleanliness, but what does that mean? All right, we already spoken about statuses, but one fun thing that you can do in these workflows is add engagements. With engagements, you can ask your folks to update relevant information that will then write back to your ATS. Again, taking that lift off your plate. Again, updating your statuses. You won't have to worry about moving the statuses to the correct one or if a member of your team is doing it because automation takes care of it in the background for you. For this specific 10 week sales process, we actually take a deeper dive into it in one of our business development best practices webinar, which I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the chat for you now. It actually worked, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. That about wraps it up for us today. I wanna to thank you all so much for your time and a huge thank you to Lana and David for their portions of the presentation. There will be a follow-up email along with a recording sent to everyone who signed up today. Uh, be well and thank you all for being the best part of Bullhorn. Thanks so much for your time.